All right. So in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, civil liberties and civil rights uh, just as a brief uh, lecture video to help you with your upcoming quiz that you're going to be getting um, during your class time this week. So civil liberties and civil rights. Um, also, just to let you know, in this PowerPoint, um, I will stop it at a certain slide because that's going to be where your remote lesson will come into play, which will be a um, image analysis and a um, song analysis from the civil liberty or civil rights uh, era, and um, you know mainly 60s, 70s, you know that time period. So, your unit goal, and what we what. Um, we in the social studies department want you to understand is that there are inherent rights and liberties um, that have been established by your constitution. Yet ensuring the security of these rights and liberties has been an ongoing struggle based between, uh, excuse me, an ongoing struggle um, balanced between the people and government institutions uh, that were created to ensure that those rights and liberties are adhered to um, so that they're not violated by your government, so on and so forth. The driving question for this unit is that the Constitution guarantees civil rights and liberties. So why is it still necessary for people to ensure these rights are protected? Defining civil liberties and civil rights. So something that we have already done in class, um, but um, again, we'll kind of a good uh, summary here in this quick lecture. So what's the difference? So your civil liberties, those are limitations on governmental power. Um, they are intended to protect freedoms that the government may not legally intrude on. Some of the examples are things like your freedoms of speech, religion, press, and assembly. Um, so many of those uh, should uh, straight, you know, ring a bell for you as those are all um, within the First Amendment. Um, although there are many other freedoms uh, listed, I uh, certainly just wanted to give you examples that you've recognized. Um, one thing you should notice that you know when you look at a civil liberty, that's going to have to do with freedom. Um, and then a civil right is, is literally going to have like the right of or the right to, um, you know, verbatim in the Constitution. Um, so civil rights, these are undeniable human rights that guarantee people will um, not be treated unfairly based upon things like race, gender, or pers other personal characteristics or political beliefs. Um, and this is protections against discrimination from your government based upon um, just a few examples that you see below, like your right to bear arms, your right to vote, uh, your right to a fair trial um, of jury of your peers, and a right to remain silent. So all of those are things that, that rights that you get that cannot be taken away from you, um, that you're just born with um, for the most part. Um, of course, at certain points and stages of your life, we, we say there are age requirements, you know, like the right to vote. We say 18 is, is going to be the, the, the time in which you get that right. But um, it's protected. You get that right as long as you don't commit a felony in this country. And that, that, is, that is something that you're just automatically born with. Uh, what does the Constitution say? So the Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the Constitution. That's what the Bill of Rights are. And they tend to focus on your individual freedoms. Um, amendments 5 through 8 are all of your rights of the accused. Um, so that way when you get accused of a crime, uh, you have a certain rights that kick in, like the right to remain silent, um, the right to a jury trial, okay, the right not to be tried for the same crime twice. All of these things are in those amendments 5 through 8. Um, and we came out with a series of those because that was those were rights that were violated. Um, pretty frequently and often. Uh, we learn a lot of this historically from understanding the history of Great Britain, um, you know, especially when you know, they are going through their process of getting to a parliamentary process of governance. Um, the King of England was running pretty, pretty wild when it came to um, the rights of the accused, throwing people in prison without you know, being told what you're being accused of. Um, you know, leaving you without any humane treatment, you know, locking you in a tower, or chaining you up, or flogging you, or, or uh, putting you in the stockades, or anything like that. Those are all rights now um, that, you know, are, are that you get automatically because 
we've learned from history. Um, and we've learned that um, when given an opportunity, people in seats of high political power will violate your rights if there aren't you know, good protections in place. So also within uh, the Constitution, outside of your first 10 amendments, there are um, some very important amendments outside of those that, that have been um, you know, codified into law um, since such as the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments. These are all adopted uh, during Reconstruction following the Civil War. These amendments were the largest expansion of civil rights in U.S. history. This focused on the abolition of slavery and involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime, citizenship and equal protection under the law for all people born in the United States, the right to vote regardless of sex, not gender, um, and that's going to take several decades before that becomes um, a, a feature and a protection uh, within the Constitution. And then, of course, the 19th Amendment, which was adopted in 1920, and that guaranteed the right to vote regardless of sex or gender. So it took much longer um, to extend that right to vote um, to all peoples, uh, regardless of some of those um, you know, issues that, that, that were mentioned in a few slides before, race, gender, um, you know, those kinds of things um, hadn't been a feature until 1920. Right. How are government institutions involved? Um, so this is a, a two-minute video on uh, the United States and the Supreme Court. Um, that's something that if you want to pause this recording now to watch that video, please do so. How are our citizens involved? So. This is where uh, the video lecture stops and where you're going to start your um, analysis of a photo or analyzing a song. So you can open up and record your thoughts like it says there on a separate Google Doc. Um, as you were going to go through these photos and songs, you will be submitting this to a Dropbox that is posted in Google Classroom, which I will post later on in the week. Um, you just need to do one song and one photo. Okay, So as you can see here, Here's a, a very famous image from the Civil Rights Movement and some of the, the marches. You can see Dr. King is, is in the front row there, but along with many other influential um, civil rights leaders that, uh, quite honestly, probably have not gotten their just, just due in history. Um, and, and, you know, Martin Luther King is certainly deserving of, of all of the accolades he has received throughout history, but there were many, many other people that were involved in the Civil Rights Movement that that have not, uh, you know, had their proper analysis and proper due within the history community. Obviously, this is a more modern day uh, movement. You can see and look at some of the signs there um, that can probably give you an idea of, of the time period you're looking at. But that's an image you can pick. Um, this one a little bit older. Again, you can tell by the dating and some of the features, clothing, things like that will probably jump out at you. Um, and you should notice a theme, right? So here's one that has more modern-day social movements, um, things like uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, and so this is a, a protest. And you can, you know, see a lot of people are masked, so you can see, you know, this is a rather recent image. Analyzing music. So you can pick from one of those images to analyze, and then uh, you have a lot of different, um, you know, music and, and little clips that you can listen to from YouTube. Um, so the Honey, Di Honey Drippers, the Impeach the President, um, For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield, and What a Friend We Have in Congress by Pete Seeger. So all, some of these are, are, are older, um, and you can you know, just click and, and listen, to the, listen to the song, and then from those questions that are on a couple slides beforehand, you just record those, those questions that you need to answer, and you'll answer those analysis questions for um, any of the, the songs that you pick. And again, you only have to do one song and one image. And then these are going to be the things that we will talk about um, in class on that 20-minute Monday. Um, so I'll ask you guys, you know, what similarities you noticed, what differences you noticed, and, and I am going to ask for specifics. So in class, please be prepared to discuss these things, similarities and differences, and what these photos and songs tell us about civil liberties and civil rights in the United States, because um, they tell us a lot, you know, especially with the mixture of modern-day you know, to, you know, past civil rights movements. Um, there's some good imagery there to compare and contrast, and we're going to discuss those things with your 20-Minute Monday. Okay. 
Um, and that should do it for your um, just brief little video lecture. Um, and uh, good luck on your, your quiz and this remote assignment. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can you know, certainly shoot me an email, text, uh, leave a comment in Google Classroom, however you would like to. Um, hope everybody is doing well. And uh, let me know, again, if you have any questions.